And joining us now to weigh in on an update, give us an update on San Diego's homeless crisis is Kate Monroe, CEO of Vetcom.us. Good morning, Kate. Good to see you again. Good morning. Glad to be here. You know this personally. You were downtown yesterday yes. at that safe sleep site, and you also talked to a lot of homeless people. Okay. What's your take on that site? Well, first, let me start with I interviewed tons of different homeless people from all the different buckets of homelessness that we talk about, right? And not a single person that I interviewed, whether they be circumstantially homeless so you would think they would want to go there a mentally ill all the you know anybody that's a drug user not a single person wanted to go there and so I had to dig deeper to find out why would you not want to go to a safe sleeping site and I did it in the backwards order I should have went and looked at the site first and then I would have understood their point but it was in the 80s yesterday when I was just walking downtown San Diego in the shade I was overheating pouring sweat me, my whole staff, all of us pounding water, and every single homeless person said, it's not safe there, it's way too hot, we can't get there, you can't get in and out of there, there's nowhere to walk to from there, there are not services there, why would I give up every single thing I own? Did it look for, like that? It did not look like that, yeah. What's the difference? How did it look So yesterday? we actually went to the safe sleeping site, and we first came in the wrong gate, because it's actually in this op operational yard in San Diego, right? It's not in some beautiful part of San Diego. And we got lost got rerouted all the way around and we spent 45 minutes trying to convince them to let us in and even leave our phones and cameras behind can we just take a look you know I genuinely was trying to seek to understand is this a good solution we were met with a ton of resistance and I can see why because when we went back around and parked by the freeway and you could actually see down into it you realize there's very few tents they are out there in the asphalt we only saw three or four people if I were homeless in San Diego I would not give up all my stuff being walking distance to services, to food, to water, to go to this. It's its embarrassing, actually. That's probably why they will not let people go and look at it. It's hot asphalt and there's no shade. There's Along no shade. Along with all the other stuff you just Correct. mentioned. Correct. Yes. Wow. So between the last time you were downtown and this time, did you see any improvement anywhere? No, I did not. Uh, it was it was almost in the same state it was the last time that we went there. In fact, I would say there were actually more people on a couple of the streets. Mm -hmm. um, there was the same level of hostility that we were there. I actually took an armed guard this time because the wow. previous time, you know, one of uh, my staff members ended up getting um, beat up, so that that wasn't good. But no, it wasn't any better. And we saw, I would say, 85% of people either high while they were talking to us or sitting on the ground doing drugs out in the open. Really? Correct. And not a single police officer in sight. There's no, there, we talk about wraparound services, yes. we use that, but there's there's none of that down, down in that area, in downtown. Right? Is no. There? I mean, you know, on the road where there's the Father Joe's and Path, yeah. there was a line wrapped around the building. And we stopped and talked to a couple people, and they said, oh, yeah, this is every day. We wait in line. They let three or four people in, and then we start over every single day. Somebody said, I've been trying to just get to the front of the line for six months. Did so you there is not enough help. Did you encounter veterans? Uh, we did encounter veterans. And you know the interesting part with veterans, because there's different. they're homeless for different reasons. They're usually only homeless for two reasons. One, circumstantially, they got out of the military. They didn't successfully bridge into their civilian life and they ran out of runway financially and they end up homeless or you know they possibly have something like PTSD mm -hmm. and actually for a veteran with PTSD being in a home might be the problem mm. that's why they seek to be outside and so in thinking about what would be an alternative to this safe sleeping site I got to thinking about veterans to active duty military because if we were to put up infrastructure camping real tents, hooches, if you will, with a cafeteria, with real showers, with real services. Mm -hmm. We could bucketize everybody, give them purposeful work, stage them from, you know, transformation to transition. You know, give people purpose. I think that would work really well for the veteran community, but I think veterans in a situation like that could be a light to all of these other people that are struggling, you know, because it could give their PTSD purpose. They could help all these other people with trauma. Yeah, and a lot of people, we, we got to talk about drug addiction too, Yes. because if we can treat them, they've got to be taken off the streets and not going to do it on their own and from what you were saying the drugs were readily available downtown oh, pretty, every single person I asked and I have footage of it I said how hard is it to get drugs here in San Diego they go I could walk straight across the street to any one of those four people standing there and get drugs right now I found out that the guy that sold me a soda yesterday is actually a drug peddler I didn't know that because I was some, you know I, I'm just a regular person I didn't realize that but the lady that walked past she said that guy's a drug dealer you just bought a soda off a drug dealer I 
I mean, it's just, it's incredible how available it is. They even told me at the Alpha Project, some of them stopped staying there because they accused the staff of actually selling drugs to people. I mean, it's it's everywhere. You, you can't get away from it. We're killing people with compassion, thinking that they're just going to get through their drug addiction. It's mm -hmm. time to get people real help, and not when they want to, right now. Get them away from the drugs, Correct. isolate them from where they can get drugs, give them yeah. treatment, the medication that they need, because uh, I've, uh, Matt, Mr. McElroy has said that before, that, you know, the way it used to be, they would go and then they would spend some time, I don't, I don't, I can't remember if they were in, uh, in, the, in the jail or there's somewhere else, and then once they get the drugs out of their system, he's like, I can do something with them. Correct. You, you, once you get them clean and get them